Content warning. This podcast is intended for a mature audience. Contains graphic descriptions of violence and explicit language. Hello, and thanks so much for tuning in to Pods of the Multiverse Season 2. We're an unofficial Dungeons & Dragons podcast. We play 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons. My name is Scala. I will be portraying the world of Ravnica, and with me are my three dear friends, portraying the characters navigating that world. My name is Jeppy, and I play Illipel, who sometimes talks like this, and others doesn't for probably no reason. <laughs> I'm Jimmy. I play Clork, the Izzet Engineer Goblin, and close personal friend of Basil Gurch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, starstruck. I am so jealous. And I'm Andy. I play Alwyn, who found a lot of common ground with a cop and is pretty conflicted about it. Thanks. <laughs> Alwyn would. <laughs> <laughs> does have minor narc tendencies but oh it comes from a feudal society right so it would make sense that there's some level of authoritarian bootlickery i don't want to say that <laughs> it is it is a hierarchical society we appreciate that uh that alan feels conflicted about it let's say that let's sure let's just oh, yeah true uh that's enough of this nonsense um <laughs> <laughs> you you know the drill. We want people to listen to our show. You can help us do that by giving us engagements, rate and review, come engage with us on our social media platforms. Help us out. Thanks. Thanks. And don't feel conflicted about it. <laughs> don't feel conflicted about it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Perfect. We recorded three of these in a row, and they're just getting progressively more ridiculous. Please, <laughs> I'm going to stop the recording. Happy Thanksgiving. All right, let's get back into it with our weekly recap quiz show, where the game was last week, and you could earn an inspiration die. They said could this time. I don't know about this. I'm not talking unless I get my guaranteed inspiration die. You got one last week. I don't even think I used it, did I? Neither you nor Jimmy have used the inspiration we die. We went to the got. mausoleum. That's right. No, uh, we went to the exchange. Also true. We went to Alexander's exquis- Alessander's exquisite attire. We went to the exchange at Vuliev's mausoleum. There were a few people there. About a billion NPCs. <laughs> Anatevna Vuliev, who was had a serpent mask on. Correct. Point for Jeppy. We met Silas, an Azorius mage. Uh, excuse me, no, no, no. You're skipping over the most important NPC of All the right, campaign. All right, fine. Fucking Bezel, Bezel Gersh, Gersh. Gersh. The goddamn yeah. chef. <laughs> <laughs> there was also Emiliel. We didn't talk to her. Prior Emiliel. Oh, we did talk to Tibich, though. Tibich, yes, mm-hmm. the jeweler. And we did not convince anyone to buy anything. And then um, Algath, of course. Oh, yeah. Algath and Illipel had their little tete-a-tete. They insulted each other without insulting each other. And uh, We talked to that arrester. What was their name? Jalen. Jalen the arrester. He's, mm-hmm. he's a Vidalcan, and he was wearing a lion mask. He was. Point for Jimmy. Oh, that must be relevant in some way. <laughs> Silas was wearing a dragon mask. I gained two inspiration or whatever it was with this per whatever the points were called then. In- influence. You did. Influence. So Illipel and Clork were pretty successful in gaining points of influence. Alwyn, despite his best efforts <laughs> in trying to <laughs> did be it differently. forward and blatantly honest in what they were doing as a party, was not successful at all. And was you know, thoroughly glad. When Clark's charisma bonuses are much higher than he lets on. Yeah. <laughs> well, Clark's charisma is not the same kind of charisma as Illipel. Yeah. It's true. Very different. There's probably just a, a natural gravitas to Clark. You know, like he's four foot tall, tough guy. <laughs> yeah. You know how, like, in other worlds, you don't meet an old orc? I feel like an is it goblin of a certain age has a certain, like, well, if you live this long, you must know something. That's right. Mm-hmm. Or you're just incredibly lucky. Which, based on the chaos bolts, it's not the case yeah. for Clark. <laughs> so anyways, Alwyn was really happy when uh, Arakdos rock band showed up and started attacking everybody. Yeah, we kicked the shit out of the band. We bagged up one of the little impy things. And then someone was just in the corner, and then we had to put him in a bubble. Korzok. They were being incredibly sus, and Alan wasn't having it. Jalen helped us. 
Jalen put Korzak in a bubble. Jalen did what Jalen does. Jalen just saved us like real life minutes. We didn't have to record as late. <laughs> we interrogated the prisoners. They didn't really give us much. They were just there to rock out. They were just there to play some tunes. Allegedly. And then Silas told us that we are to go to Brevislav's vault. Exactly. Underneath Viscopa, presumably. And we're going to meet Tomek this session to go to the vaults and then find our way, hopefully, to Brevislav's vaults. Before we wrapped up, uh, Illipel kindly invited Alwyn to the Violet Rose to, to spend the evening and to have some drinks in the morning. Or a drink. So you think that Illipel is going to have some extravagant conversation well we'll see we will see that's, that's... <laughs> clark is not aware of any of that i'm I... wondering what you two are doing without me all right everybody roll a d20 <laughs> what's funny is like I, I was having dinner today and i was like i feel like clark doesn't give a shit but i know jimmy wants to know why the fuck clark's not involved in this <laughs> nine it's over it nine, uh, 18 13 you all had four points from what I was counting. So, Jimmy, you can take the inspiration. Does that stack with the inspiration I already had? Yes, you have two charges of it now. Ah, oh, cool. Jesus. Nice. Maybe I'll hit an enemy this game. <laughs> says says we'll the guy who crit on the devil. That's right. I did do that. It was very cool. Let's see what this is going to be all about with Illipel and Alwyn at the Violet Rose. You go to this, I don't want to say seedy, because it is well-maintained, and it caters to some upscale people, but it is unpretentious about its services on offer. As the proprietor, I would agree. So you head to this pleasure house for the evening. What do you do? Opening the door, I'll just say, this is, for lack of a better word, my abode. It's, well, it's not that it's not much, it's plenty, could be more. Either way, it's yours for the evening. The rooms are back through that door. I stay upstairs. All right. I don't need anything fancy. Lead the way. Surely. I will walk to where the rooms are and show Alwyn to a room. If you need anything at all in the middle of the night. Down there, and I'll point to a far away door. That's Remy's room. And to the other side is Sylvia and Cherry. Feel free to bother either of them with anything you need. They should be more than accommodating. If not, plan to meet me out at the bar whenever you're feeling up for it in the morning. Thank you, Illipel. You're too kind. Illipel nods and walks upstairs and goes to sleep. Very good. Everyone long rest. Has a fruitful long rest. Alwyn, like, without another thought about what the fuck Illipel is going to get into with this conversation, just on the floor, passes out. <laughs> no, <laughs> doesn't even make bed it to in the, the room. bed. <laughs> just boom. Alwyn takes more comfort in a solid surface than a lavish bed. Alwyn wraps himself in his cloak and yeah. just is out. That's right. The next morning... Yeah, Illipel wakes up early, dolls themselves up with a nice perfume. No special occasion perfume, just one of the many brilliant aromatics that they possess, and heads out to the bar, probably greets some patrons that are used to seeing them more frequently, and Illipel hasn't been around much, but other than that, we'll just wait for Alwyn. I wonder what's so important that they didn't invite Cork. Jimmy thinks. <laughs> <laughs> you head out into the tavern area of this establishment. There's a smell of fat cooking and a few patrons milling about. There's a pot of coffee on the stove and Remy will come up. Your master Illipel's special guest. Coffee for you. Just a tea, thank you. As strong as you can make it. Oh, a tea person. I'm so terribly sorry. No need to apologize. As you like. Goes back behind the bar, picks up a teapot now, comes back with a, a cup of tea. Yeah, I take it. How were the accommodations last night? Just fine. More than fine. Thank you again. Did you even make it to the bed? No, Illipel, you know I'm much more comfortable on the floor, thank you. But it was a good floor. Sturdy. Solid. It has not fallen from under my feet quite yet. Don't hold your breath. I wouldn't be very surprised if someday it does. No, eh? Someday soon, by the look of it. What do you want to talk about? Well, Illipel will kind of give a scrunch to the ground. I suppose could start with the Violet Rose. The floors may not be broken down yet, but I am proud of this place. You see, I didn't quite earn it. To be completely honest with you, I stole it. I had my suspicions. You've already met the proprietor. Aye, on Elgast. The very same. I feel as though I should be upfront with you about my history with her before I tell you what I found when I went to her office. Alwyn looks into the tea and, after taking a slow drink, 
All right, let's have it. It concerns you in particular. <clears throat> <laughs> was that was that supposed to be yes. Alan's reaction? Oh, okay, because it actually seemed like I it know. was you. <laughs> Let me take a big sip. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Alan spits some tea out onto the table. <clears throat> And that's the reason our mutual friend Clark has not quite been invited. Also, quite frankly, I don't really think he'd care. Now then, he's in charge of us. Don't you think he would care about his friends? Comrades, as you say? While I think plenty of Clark, I do not think that that's a position that he holds great pride in. Go on. Arnel visited me not too long ago and took most of what I had uncovered. I'll do my best to go off of memory. But there is one thing she left behind. And Illipel will slide a note to Alwyn. What is this? It is a note <laughs> from that doctor, Tiganti, the one that had your brother. Without saying another word, Alwyn opens and reads it. And the note, I'll just read this to uh, you. I'll, I'll read the note. They sure. want to do his voice. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> On it, I have the young Golgari Idrith as you requested. I agree. He shows tenacity and loyalty. It was simple to convince him that this work would save his family. Nonetheless, the work to bring together the widening and tightening gyre can continue. We are stowed away deep below. None shall find it. While we work to relieve our respective guilds of their short-sighted desires, I trust in our shared guidance and look forward to seeing you down here with grace. Knowledge and care, Dr. Taganti. Excuse me? <laughs> you fucker. <sighs> so then, they're working together. There's more. Among the documents that she stole seems to suggest that she is working alongside the consortium. Okay, so player knows what's going on here a mm. little bit. Yeah. Does Alwyn at all? Roll history, but I'd say it's a long shot. Okay. That's a seven. Uh, Alwyn has never heard of anything called the Consortium. What is the Consortium exactly? I myself know little. What little I do know. Mm. If you want to roll insight... Kind of do. Knowing Illipel. If you want to roll deception... Sure, I will say that I will have a hard time answering that question, because I, the player, do not know a lot about the Consortium. Uh, 19. Yeah. That's a 22. Alwyn, you get the impression when Illipel says, I know little, that... Maybe they know more than they're saying. Still looking towards my glass. Illipel, I know it's in your nature, in your business, in your way of life. Do not be direct or honest. And then turning to them. But for your sake, as much as mine, you must tell me everything you know. Who are these people? What do they want? They are predominantly collectors of artifacts. They seek... No, no, uh, no, 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 no. They disseminate dangerous materials. Historically, they have even had dabblings with Jace himself. There's a reason I know little, because little is confirmable. What I do know, what I can promise, is that this link between her and the Consortium is true, and it does not bode well. Plus, there's that manner with the Eternal. Oi. You sit in the Golgari, respected. You've recently turned your brother back to his family. I'm simply looking for your help. If Stonehaven is in danger, Rena will know what to do. I understand where you're coming from. I do. And I want to protect my own, as you say. That's a fair assessment, but I have demands. As do I. Alan just kind of gives him a look like, of course you fucking do. What are your demands? We shouldn't keep Cloak out of this. We can tell him all the details he will hear until he walks away of boredom. I think you underestimate him, I honestly do. I hope so. Alan sort of furrows his brow even deeper than it already is. I know it's very hard for you to do this, but if there's anything else you keep from me or him, you can't do it that way anymore. The less I know about our enemy, if I am to believe that they even are our enemy, means that I have to be that much more on guard for all our sake. Look what happened with the assassins. Look what happened with Arnel. You sneaking off. As a scavenger, as a Golgari, I have training in these sorts of encounters. The more I know, the more prepared we can be. You're not wrong. Your demands are reasonable. I will accommodate them. Gladly. My demand is simple. Trust me and hold me accountable. Please, keep the letter. Mull over this as long as you need, but let it be there to remind you. In the meantime, we should continue our work for the Guild Pact. 
Let us hope that Anel's machination... Hold up one second. Oh boy, here we go. Illipel, as you go to say Anel Gast, make me a constitution save. <gasps> oh! That's right. She said not to say. She said not to say. It's a nat 20. <laughs> I'm, do you want me to roll again? It seems... No! No! Because, no, your face tells me you wished I had failed. Every DM wishes they fucking fail saves. Let's be honest. It would have been cool, but the dice... The dice determine the outcome of the game. So you roll the 20. What a game. As you go to say her name, you feel a spectral force wrap around your throat and squeeze and try to choke the word out of you, but you manage to fight off whatever... Is this purely psychic, or do I see this? Whatever. You might see Illipel stutter a bit as they speak, but there's no, like, visible, tangible effect other than them just stumbling over their words as they have to catch their breath. Oofa doofa. Would Illipel have known with that 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 was an attempt? Uh, roll, roll Arcana. Okay. okay. I'd say 15. You don't know what may have caused that. Okay, all right. Yeah, but my last bit of dialogue was just, you know, I think I ended with, let's continue with the guild packed work. So, Alwyn, I don't know if you want to have more to say, or we can make way. We should be going. Agreed. If we find ourselves in the second precinct, you are more than welcome. A door and a bed and a floor will always be here for you, if you need it. Thank you. All right. You meet up, as instructed, outside the bank of Viscopa, this tall, opulent structure of Gothic spires adjacent to the Cathedral of Orjova. Somewhat smaller, more practical. Still a great deal of gaudy decoration has been applied to this construction. As you approach up the marble steps, a pair of armed guards bar your passage. They've got the eyeless helms. They hold halberds over the gate with one hand and extend a collection plate in the other and say, Quid tributem offeris soli? I mean, I speak celestial, but I, the, the player does not. Illipel, you would understand this. What offering do you bring for the sons? In celestial, we offer companionship to a dear member of the Orzhov named Tomek. Gold or blood? Should we just wait out here? Illipel, you would know it's somewhat customary to just make a donation as you go into the bank. Yeah. Yeah, Illipel will hand them each... You, know, you, you hate to be rude. You, know, you do your door dash and you're like, fuck, what's the right amount? Especially with valet, I never know. But anyway, Illipel will offer each 25 zib. DM, is that reasonable? I don't know. what. That's not gold. Is it each a Zeno? I mean, you can hand them each a silver coin and that would be fine. What's a silver coin? All I know is Zenos and Zibs. It's a 25 zib piece is the silver coin. Oh, okay. Uh, let's do 50 each. I'll do two silver pieces each and just say... We'd like to stick to coin today, if that's all the same. They uncross their halberds and let you pass. Cool. We will walk through, and presumably in whatever you hall... You will walk through. Oh. They look expectantly. All right. I, I pay the same. This doesn't have to be a big thing. I pay the same. Oh, yeah, okay. no. it, it doesn't yeah, have to Yeah, okay. Be. I, I do, too. Okay. You all put some money in the collection plates, and they let you pass. There's a large lobby, a long teller station with fine wooden desks with large iron bars separating the back from the public area. And waiting to meet you is indeed Tomic Vrona. Uh, he's got his scroll cases across his back, several scrolls under his arm, his gargoyle bouncer standing behind him. Ah, my friends, it is good to see you. Clark is going to walk up still wearing the hat from last night. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Nice. Fantastic. Master Clark, how was your evening? I called you Master Clark because I see the top hat. Fine. How was yours? Fine. As you say, you're going to keep that thing on from now on. I think it looks nice. Wait, you don't agree? Mm. Oh, I agree completely. I think it gives me a little bit more gravitas, you know? Makes people take me a little more seriously. I'm a legitimate businessman. I. That's your cloak. I have half a mind to take lessons from you as to how to run mine. Well then, let us be about our legitimate business. Follow. I will show you the way to the vaults. 
He leads you down a long corridor. Your footfalls echo against the stone in this place you can hear. It's hard to tell if it's wailing or singing coming from the rafters above. Nice. But eventually you head down a narrow stone staircase into a basement and it sort of opens up into a larger room where there are a pair of giants standing at the door. Again, crossed halberds, gold armor, sightless helms. I have come to inspect my vault, Tomek Vrona. Okay, I'll go with you. Oh no, that is not necessary, he gestures to his gargoyle. I have brought my own security. Besides, you can be assured of me. What about the others? They are my guests. And do you think your security will be enough for them? You know, Mr. Skarlov would be very upset if he heard you were asking so many impertinent questions. Okay, you go. They uncross their halberds and allow you to pass, and you are led further down into the vaults of this copa. I just kind of lean over to topic. You all do know that gold makes terrible plate, right? The metallurgical process of gilding is not something that I am overly familiar with, but I believe our smiths know how to keep the structural integrity of the steel beneath. I just kind of look over to Illipel. Nothing really is, as it seems, around you people, is it? Perhaps you would know more of this, Master Clark? Yeah, if you uh, cover anything with gold, it makes it look kind of fancy. <laughs> so good. Can't tell what's underneath. The most tasteful deception of all. Alwyn just kind of shakes his head and shuts up. <laughs> you walk past a number of alcoves in which there are some upright stone sarcophagi with the sort of Han Solo in carbonite carved likenesses of various priests and knights and things of that nature. Bishops and knights and rooks. There's some pawns there, too. Oh, man. Sorry. Oh. Wow. Wow. <laughs> are there people in all those? What remains of them? Yes. Oh. Are you going to be one of those one day? Oh, no. Mine will be much more decorated, I think. More decorated than this? Oh, yes. It's going to be covered in gold. <laughs> I like to aim a bit higher than that. Platinum, of course. <laughs> nice. <laughs> in any event... My humble vault is down this way, but I believe Brevislav's is down that way. Points in a different direction down another set of stairs. Tomek, I assumed you'd be coming with us. I do not think that you will need my assistance. How do we get in? That is a good question. Anybody think of that sooner? The vaults are often unlocked, but guarded. This is a place of respect for the dead. It would be strange for someone to place locks and bars... They are trying simply to pay respects to their family members. So then you know what we can expect on the inside? Well, he looks back at his gargoyle. I have a few guardians in my family's vault, but it varies from oligarch to oligarch. Alan takes out his gavel and with a not-so-subtle grin. We see. So if we're here to pay respects, as you say, <laughs> what is it you know about Brevislav? Antonin Brevislav is... An old prelate. He is wealthy, he commands a good deal of influence, and his family name brings with it the respect of those well-known for brokerages in exotic items. Is this someone that's still alive, or is this a ghost? Oh, uh, Antonin Brevislav is very much alive, though nearing the end of his days. I see. Clark finishes writing in his notepad, brokerages in exotic items. All right, so we're winging it. I cast mage armor. All right. I see Clark cast his mage armor. I will shillelagh a weapon. Okay. You shillelagh a weapon. We both look at Illipel, waiting for them to fucking battle armor. Yeah, while the, while the rest of the party kind of gets their battle gear ready, Illipel will just kind of massage their jaw in anticipation of talking a lot. <laughs> you head down the staircase. It spirals down into darkness. There were some torches illuminating your path thus far but down this staircase it seems that nothing is illuminated before we go down too far can i take a minute and apply that poison the spider venom that i have sure cool i put that on the gavel okay i think you told me 2d6 but i don't remember yeah i'm uh, 2d6 dc 14 con save what i will say is it isn't a contact poison it requires a slashing or piercing weapon mm. It, it's spider venom. It's meant to be injected. You could give it to one of your allies, though. I will do that. I look to Illipel. Pick this up off that spider we fought a while back. I can put it on your rapier. Might help us. Say no more. Illipel will 
unsheath the rapier and point it at Alwyn in a non-threatening way. And I will apply my venom to Illipel's rapier. <laughs> you anoint Illipel's blade with the venom. Your next attack will deal an additional 2d6 poison damage. But if these are gargoyles, they're probably going to be immune, so never mind. I don't know that. We don't know that. Alwyn's doing his best. Sorry, let's go. <laughs> you might know that, but you don't know that there's going to be gargoyles in here. It's true. You head down into the darkness. How dark is it? Dark. You can't see. With what your are you talking about? Eyes. I can see fine. Illipel and Clark can see fine. Alwyn can. I'll cast some dancing lights, but I'll, I'll keep them close. Okay. Alwyn, you call up your dancing lights. You head down these stairs. The darkness is kept at bay, and you arrive in a stone corridor. It seems to extend one way to the left and one way to the right. Shall we split up? I wouldn't recommend that. So to tell. Let me rephrase that. Illipel, you go that way. Alwyn, come with me. Can I see any sort of details in the walls or anywhere in general without walking too far? Yeah, you can see a long mosaic on the wall of this corridor that seems to depict some history of what you would presume is the Brevislav family. Nothing I can get with, like, a roll or anything? Um, you could try and roll history to know more about the events depicted. That's all right. All right. We'll follow Cloak's lead, but if it keeps branching off, we should come back here. Agreed. Come back if you find uh, another branch or anything worth investigating. Who's going right? Who's going left? Sounds like I was instructed to go right. Or did you say left? I don't think I gave you a dress. I think I said Clark that said way. this way and that way. Either way. Yeah, you go off to the right. <laughs> okay. Illipel goes to the right. Clark and Alwyn go to the left. After walking a short distance, each of you come to a turn in the corridor. Illipel, to the right of you, you see a, a small alcove with a stone sarcophagus standing upright in it, and then another corridor leading down to the left. Alwyn and Clark, you see the inverse. So on your left, a small alcove with a stone, sarco stone sarcophagus and a continuation of the corridor to the right. Can I just look down the corridor and see if there's any features? Yeah. Is it, sorry, is it far enough that Clark and Illipel can still see each other? 60 feet? Or is it farther than that? You can sort of just barely okay. see each cool. other sorry. on Got opposite it. ends of this corridor. Okay. Do I see anything down the further corridor? Yes. Looking down, you see an iron gate and then a bit more passageway and another iron gate. And some stairs leading down. Uh, I'm going to call it to Illipel. It's just a gate on this side. What do you see? Can I look down my corridor? Yeah. As far as you can see, there's just a long corridor. There appears to be about 20 or 30 feet down a door leading off to a room in the left wall of the corridor. Mine doesn't quite end at a gate. There may be additional rooms. But real quick, I'd like to inspect the sarcophagus. Okay. How are you do? How are you going? Not touch it. I don't. I just want to look. Is there like a lever, a glint, anything like that? Yeah, sure. Roll investigation. I've just been playing Resident Evil, so like I expect <laughs> there to be like you both pull it at the same time and the gate comes up, kind of thing. Otherwise, it cuts your arm. On a nat one, I'm going to guess no Resident Evil puzzles have made themselves clear to me at this time. Yeah, you see a placard that says "Here lies Yuri Brevislav." Alan will take a look at this one. Sure. Roll investigation. <laughs> It's only an 11. Yeah, here lies, um... Dimitri. Dimitri Prefoslav. We should head back to Illipel. Sounds more promising. I think you're right. All right, stay there. We're coming to you. Okay. You rejoin Illipel. Oh, he's got a fucking little attitude about him. <laughs> it's just so great. It's my favorite character we've ever played with. <laughs> all right. Are we all together again? Yep, you're all together. All right. You good with this darkness, Alan? We're going deeper. My... Line of sight is much more limited, but I'll be fine, thanks. All right, stay close. I'll go first. Okay, yeah. About 30 feet down the corridor, there's a door into another room, and then further down, it continues. Does the door look... It's a closed door. Does it look lock, locked or suspicious or anything? Sounds like you're rolling investigation? <sighs> Mine's so bad, though. I'll roll investigation. Cloak, what do you make the door? This door? Six. It's a door made of wood. It appears to be unlocked. Okay, there it is. <laughs> That's a low DC. <laughs> There's going to be nothing in this room. That's why. It's going to be a note that says you should have looked at the crypts a little harder. All right. I'll open the door. Alan opens the door. The door appears to be locked. Oh, fuck you. Oh, thought it was open. 
I could knock it. I still have I still have a couple more strings left on my loot to try and unlock this thing. And that worked so well for you last time. Did it? I forget. I did get the door open. It just took like you did. Two, two tries. It took several tries. You also didn't see it happening, but that's okay. But I'm sure you told it about me after. I just kind of look at Clark, remembering how fucking loud Knock is. It's probably not the best idea. I don't see anyone here. Anyone yet? All right. Well, let's exhaust all our options. Can I, like, put my ear to the door and try and listen for anything inside? Sure, roll me a perception check. There we go. 25. You hear a sound like the shifting of skin, like a wet wriggling. Mm, shifted. Maybe shambling. Sort of wet. Oi, probably a zombie. Or a snake. Or a large frog. Ah. All these sounds start to sound the same. Frog shamble? A shift. Ah, there's something in there. Yeah, it's only made of wood. Could just knock it down. No, we could. Or we could keep going. You're in charge. All right. You're right. I'm in charge. And I'm tired of looking at this door. <laughs> Owen is totally just trying to play into Clark's own ego with this. Yeah. <laughs> just from day one. All right. Clark trudges further into the darkness. Okay. Up ahead, you can finally see the end of this corridor. There is a room with another wrought iron gate directly in front of you and another similar gated room to the left you can see inside both of them, there are sarcophagi. All right. Does the one ahead keep going, or does that stop? Beyond the gate, there is a room with a sarcophagus in it, and then it stops. Okay. And these sarcophagi are not upright like the ones in the alcoves. They are lying on the floor with elaborate statues on top. The one on the left has a knight brandishing a sword with one of those offering bowls in their offhand. And then the other one shows a priest with a number of, I don't want to say sinners because that's not exactly right, supplicants, that's the word I'm looking for, bowing at their feet and grabbing at their robes. I want to look at the mechanism of these gates. Yeah, sure. How do these things work? It uses an advanced contraption you'd be familiar with called a hinge. I see. And so these are <laughs> locked gates that would swing open? You haven't tried them. Oh. I just assumed they'd be locked. I'm going to try a gate. It swings open. Shit. All right. I found the way forward. Well, these both are just rooms, right? There's no more hallways. Yeah, there are just two rooms here. And you said that the priest one is the one ahead and the knight one is the one to the side? Yes. Great. Sort of gruesome imagery. Clark, which one did you open? Knight. Yeah, I'll take a look around, see if I can see anything interesting. Sure. Roll investigation. <laughs> That's a flat 16. Here lie Boris and Irina Brevislav. Cool. It's just more graves. That one has a collection plate. Illipel, put something in there. Yeah, Illipel doesn't have anything nice to, anything to say. Surely, the, surely if there's a mechanism, it is based on weight. I was going to say, didn't have anything to say, and then says something anyway. Of course. And then takes out, just, I'm just going to take out like a fistful of copper. I'm not going to, you know, nothing too lavish. Just drop it on there. Kappa. Okay, you do that. Disrespectful. Roll initiative. Wasn't enough. <laughs> From the tomb, okay. you uh -oh. see two spectral figures rise. Their bodies are draped in extravagant shrouds, their faces hidden behind black gossamer veils, and they say, You dare insult our memory with such a paltry sum! Roll initiative. Oh, Hillbill, you knew better. Clark adjusts his top hat and says, Boris and Arena, I presume. That's us. At least they know our names. My companion here was just adjusting for inflation. Oh my God. <laughs> 22. 19. Five. Illipel, you're up first. I don't suppose you'd be willing to give me another chance, would you? Yeah, fucking negotiate with these ghosts. The wrong, the wrong person to get the best initiative. <laughs> They sort of look at you. They see perhaps you've got like a lapel pin with the icon of the black son of Orzhov. Surely you should have known better. You'd think so, wouldn't you? What did I just say? I just told them that. I'm afraid I don't have my wits about me here in the darkness. I surely will do better next time. But in the meantime, what would be of value to you? Something more than these insignificant coppers. We are Boris and Arena Brevislav. <laughs> Surely the weight of my allegiance to Orzhov may suffice. I'll take the pin and hand it over. See if they're willing to take it. These are the vaults of Viscopo. We all have allegiance to Orzhov. Gold, you fool. 
gold. <laughs> you should know by now, if Jeppy's waffling, you gotta make him roll something. I think, because I, it's just like, they're fucking rich. What gold am I gonna, I have 20 gold. I have 13 left. What am I gonna give him? I'm just gonna attack it. I don't fucking over this. Jesus. <laughs> Don't give me that face, Jimmy. Like, you know, it'd be nice to just... It's skipping combat's fun. I happen to agree with you on a Yeah, level I was going to say, this but... the Scala school of role-playing. Yeah. <laughs> if it were me, it would be the persuasion check with disadvantage school of... <laughs> Quadruple disadvantage. Roll whatever. five times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're fighting this enemy. All right, uh, I'm going to cast... Uh, how close are they? They're close to you. Probably 10 feet away. So I can't cast Fairy Fire without casting it on myself. I mean, you could probably put it in the back corner of this room. Yeah. Okay. Sleep ain't happening. We're not fucking with sleep, but we'll do a fairy fire. Okay. They roll deck saves. One got a 15. One got an 8. The 8 fails, and I think 15 is the DC. Tie goes to the defender. One is sparkly. Anything else from you, Illipel? Uh, no... Okay, we move on to Alwyn. All right, I'm going to balk at Illipel's attempt at amends. Balk all you want, but I've just lit your way for you yet again. And attack the glowing one. Okay. 26. Easily hits. Uh, This is with the gavel, which is shillelagh. That's... 10 bludgeoning and 4 necrotic. It seems to take 10 bludgeoning, but the necrotic damage appears to have no effect. That's not a good sign. I'm going to offhand and see if it hits or not. Okay. 22 to hit. Hits. And this is with the mallet. 4 bludgeoning. Your mallet seems to pass through this incorporeal form to diminished effect. Yeah, I thought as much. Okay. Though this spirit that you've been wailing on does seem rather uh, displeased that it decided to get out of its crypt this evening. Go back to sleep. Our business is not with you. All right, Boris is going to come at you, Alwyn. Irina is going to come at you, Illipel. Okay, a five does not hit Alwyn. Nope. A seven does not hit Illipel. Clark, we're over to you. You're going to have to try harder than that. I'm going to stick my hand into the incorporeal form of Boris and do a shocking grasp. Nice. (laughs) All right. (laughs) And that is a 23 to hit. Okay, yeah, roll damage. Five lightning damage on Boris. Boris crackles. Even though Boris appears resistant to this lightning damage, it does seem to be enough to discorporate him. I suppose I'm not the warrior I used to be. (laughs) <laughs> As he dissipates into mist. Illipel. Okay. No worries. There's one left, right? Yep. Can't wait to see how poison damage fares against incorporeal forms. I will go ahead and do a standard rapier attack. Okay. And does a 15 hit? A 15 hits. Sweet. That is eight piercing damage. Okay. And nine poison damage. If they make the con save or aren't immune. As you pass your rapier through this incorporeal body, the poison does not... Do shit. Got it. <laughs> the poison does not do shit. Alan just sort of looks at Illipel. Oh, come on. I'm also going to say it's not consumed. Okay. The poison has no body to envenom, so it stays on the blade. You imbue a weapon with poison before heading in to a haunted crypt. And blame my shortcomings? You just saw me hit the other one. You could have hit it with a spell. Do you like to see a spell? Very well. You'll do just fine. And I cast a very whatever bardic inspiration on Alwyn. Technically not a spell, but I'll take it. It's technically an ability, but still. (laughs) Alwyn, you're up. Awesome. I'm gonna hit him. Try to. Your spiteful bickering inspires you. <laughs> yeah, and I'm actually going to use it right away because that wasn't a great roll. Fuck you <laughs> and fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah, because that was only a 14 without the inspiration. Okay. And with the inspiration, it becomes a dirty 20. That will hit. Cool. That's uh, nine bludgeon. Irina. <sighs> you insult us again. Dissipates. And we oh, shit. Sure. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't pay. You could have just given him... No, that was a quick combat, and I'm glad I didn't pay. 
He could have just given him gold. Says the person constantly skirting out of fiscal responsibility. Are your pockets finite too? What is this questioning authority? (laughs) It's all right, the two of you. Cut it out. Sorry, the darkness has gotten to me. I'm a bit short-tempered. You're right. I'll say. All right. So you have dispatched these spirits in this room. Anything else you're doing here? No one that did, they won't rest for long. We better move on. We should head back to the stairs. Did you want to take your copper back, Illipel? Damn it, I was going to say that. I don't mind if I do, Illipel says as they swipe the copper off of the offering plate. Okay, you do that. Do any more fucking ghosts show up? <laughs> nope. <laughs> Great. All right. So you head back to the start of this dungeon. Is that what I'm gathering? Yeah. Sure. Alan kind of starts leading the party back to the gates on the other side and towards the stairs that were past the two gates that we both saw. Okay. Pointing out to the first one. What do you think, Cloak? Unlocked as well. Only one way to find out. I'm going to try opening the gate. This gate opens. You can see as you step into this hallway, there's also another small room off to the left. Okay. Okay. Does this have a door also or a gate? It appears to have a door. Kind of similar to the one on the other hallway? Yep. Okay. I'll put my ear up to this one. Make a perception check. Don't mind if I do. That's a dirty 20. You hear some similar sounds to mm. the sounds you heard in the other room. Similar sounds. Curious. Zombies? I'll just try the handle to see if it's locked, but I'm not going to open it if it isn't. It is unlocked. The other one was locked, though, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just kind of look back to everyone. Strange. This one's unlocked. All right. Well, get your mushrooms going, and let's get ready to go in. <laughs> There's the thinking I can agree with. I'll go ahead and send by Anna Kennedy. Okay. And open the door. Okay, you open the door. Um, you see in this room a small desk. It gives the appearance of a counting room, but there's no coins. The ledgers on the table are blank. And as you step into this room, everyone make a perception check. Oh, my God. 18, 17, 3. Okay, Alwyn and Illipel, you see also crawling over the walls and ceilings of this room are a massive group of writhing tubes of pallid gray flesh dragging themselves across the walls with gangly arms. They turn to look at you with the dour mask fused to their face and open a circular mouth full of pointed teeth. Let's have everyone roll initiative at this point, but, Clark, you are going to be surprised by this. 22. Oh, no. 16. 6. Svog fears fucking bones. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, let's go. The swarm world really high on initiative. It's going on initiative count 23. Are you shitting? These parasitic thralls begin to drop down from the walls and ceilings and swarm over your party. Illipel does a 14 hit you. A don't hit shit. Okay. No. Normal way to say that. Alwyn, I presume a natural 20 hits you. Fuck. God damn it. Yeah. You take... Oh, that sounded like a lot. I hope those were fours. I rolled low. (laughs) You take eight... Piercing damage as this swarm gnashes you. Okay. Now I know you. You're going to have me make a save of some kind. Nope. Not yet. Okay. You're just getting extra damage. Does uh, a 20 hits you. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Oh, shit. Max damage, you take 12. What the? As these leeches drop onto you. Illipel, you're up. They're now, like, swarming all over the lot of you. Fighting into your comrades. You appear to, so far, be unscathed. What kind of damage did they do? Piercing. Um, uh, uh, mealworm damage. <clears throat> also, ew. These leechy teeth sort of dig into you. For some reason, I'm getting, like, bottom of Blight Town vibes from this, and it's really gross. Okay, I'm gonna... Yeah, I'm just gonna make an attack against the one that bit into Clork, because it hurt Clork a lot, and I don't want to hurt it. I'm just gonna stab it. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, cool. I'm assuming a dirty 20 will hit. A dirty 20 most certainly hits. Okay. I was looking at you like it fucking better. That is eight piercing damage, and then make a con save against ten poison damage. Okay. Uh, They fail that con save. So so they they take take ten poison damage.
damage. Ten poison damage, and you said eight piercing damage? Eight piercing damage. The sort of amorphous, wriggling nature of this swarm seems to make it resistant to physical damage. So it took four? Four, Or yes. zero, okay. So it takes that hit. Clark, we're over to you. Can you make me a constitution save as you start your turn with one of these leeches attached to you? Okay. Ooh. <laughs> that one. Plus five. <laughs> Okay. Are you concentrating on any spells right now? No. Okay. Um, You take six points of necrotic damage. Oh my god. And you feel like if you were concentrating on a spell, this leech would be making that very difficult. Fire mine, save me. Um, Oh, it's still my turn. Yeah, you still have actions. (laughs) That was just a thing that happened on the start of your turn. All right. Well, I'm going to try to hit him with a glitch bolt. Okay. 24 to hit. Absolutely hits. All right, dot stop. Four lightning damage. The leech grappling onto you is stung by this glitch bolt and wriggles and falls to the floor. You can see that a number of these leeches has been diminished by your collective efforts. Alwyn, over to you. Make me a con save, please. You got it. 15. 15. You take half of five, so two necrotic damage. Okay. Uh, you said this this swarm is already looking pretty hurt? Yes. Alwyn sort of surveys this scene as it is unfolding, sees that Clork is rather hurt. We'll go ahead and cast Cure Wounds on Clork. Hell yeah, Max. Clork, you heal 12. Thanks, pal. And then I'm going to sit tight. All right. And now the swarm will... I'm going to use uh, Halo on the start of their turn. Make a con save? Yeah, thanks. All right. It rolled a 13. It adds nothing to that. Cool. That does fail. Hell yeah, that's seven necrotic damage. As your spores explode in little puffs, a few of these leeches wither and drop to the ground. Oy, that they do. (laughs) But now they're going to attempt a bite on each of you. Illipel, does a 15 hit you? Ty goes to the attacker or defender for attacks? Ty goes to attacker for attacks. Okay, a 15... Hits me. Okay. You take two points of piercing damage. Keep it that way. Cork, I assume a 12 misses you. Correct. And a natural one won't hit anything. Awesome. Illipel, we are back to you. Please make me a constitution save. Mm-hmm. 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 Fuck, can I? What? You've got a leech attached to you. Uh, 22. 22. Okay, you take half of two, one necrotic damage. Nice. And it's your turn. Just more of a nuisance, aren't they? Try and fucking flail off these leeches. Uh, I'm going to cast Dissonant Whispers. Okay. You're just a leech. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck to say right now. <laughs> <laughs> that is untrue. Illipel always has something to say. You just suck the blood off of the lowliest of lives down here in the deepest of dungeons of Ravnica's greatest guild. You're worthless. Okay. Make a wisdom save, please. Okay. Wisdom save... In the swarm, 17 plus Yeah, okay, nothing. yeah, great, cool. <laughs> so you'll take half damage of... Oh, okay, I rolled pretty high, actually. Half of 16, eight psychic damage. Okay. All but the last few of these leech-like thralls scream in anguish and drop to the ground, writhing and falling inert. Mm. Clork, we're over to you. All right, it's just a few left. Just a few left. All right, I'm going to zap him with my still up glitch bolt. Oh, yes, indeed. That's three lightning damage. Three lightning damage. Wow, that's yeah. That's exactly how many hit points they had left. Ah, oh, that's great. Hey! Why don't you add some flourish to this killing blow? All right, yeah. So I already kind of have this arc of lightning attached to all of them, and I just up the amplitude a little bit. And fry them all. Yeah, you do. The smell of embalmed flesh crackling with electricity fills your nostrils as the rest of these parasites fall down dead. I wonder what these things taste like now that we barbecued a few. Cork, I wouldn't invoice it. No? (laughs) All right. Forgive me. Probably should have done this sooner. And I'll pull out a couple of the healing potions that I made in our downtime, and I'll give one of each of them to Clark and Elipel. Thank you. Thanks, pal. All right. Is there anything else in this room now that we've kind of disposed of that? Make a investigation check. Ugh. I'll do it too. Uh, flat 18. 
Okay. 18 plus 3. Ah. And nope, just whatever they got. It's better than what I got. So 7. 2 plus 5. Anyone curious? <laughs> yes. So you root around this room. You find a lot of like blank ledgers. It's almost giving me like museum set vibes. Something like that. Yeah. It feels like this is a place that might be a tribute to someone who was a notable banker in the family, Mm. storing their possessions and their office, how they kept it. But inside the desk, you do find a key ring with three keys on it. Mm. Well done, Cloak. I'm going to take it. Don't mind if I do. Yeah. Okay. As you take this key ring... Oh, no. You put it in your pocket. Yep. <laughs> that was a fake out. All right. Okay. Fuck you. It really sounded like we were about to, you fucker. <laughs> <laughs> that really sounded like we were. Yeah. Yeah, that was the point. But I guess one of those might go to the other duel. You want to fight more of those things? Maybe there's more keys in that room. Oy. Anyway. Hmm. What would you like to do? Did they kind of like deteriorate or are there still any remains no there are still dead parasite bodies can i give those a look are you looking for anything specific (sighs) i want to kind of discern their durability if that makes without me meta asking how much health did one of those have okay roll me i'm gonna say arcana this is a necromantic process Mm. (coughs) flat 15 you know this Orzhov necromancy that creates these thralls is very different to how you practice necromancy in the Golgari Swarm. You guys are more practical. You reuse remains kind of as they come to you, but the Orzhov take great pains to reshape these bodies into symbols of both shame for the debtor whose flesh is becoming them and status for the creditor who is inheriting them you contemplate all this lore and i'll also tell you they have eight hit dice oh cool wow no that's a great way to put that it's all sort of twisted it's uh, if this world's had catholicism and catholic guilt well it'd be rife with it i don't know what that is i don't know it's up to you we can try the other door we can keep going let's keep going for now there may be something useful but Mm, actually those other gates were a dead end all right yeah let's try the other door If I can quickly unlock and open it, I have a pretty strong opening move I could try and surprise it with. That sounds interesting. Do that. Now, Cloak, don't underestimate yourself. Your chaos bolt is pretty strong. Well, we all know that. Right, we do. We could all sort of surprise. Prepare our biggest spell. I see. Of course, now that I think about it, we're not very far into this vault, are we? And you say I talk a lot. (sighs) Alan is really hurt by that remark. (laughs) All right, let's go to the other door. Clerk is going to try the keys on the door. All right. One of the keys does appear to fit this lock. All right. Before I open it, I look back at Alwyn and Illipel. You ready? Yes. I'm going to prepare a spell. Okay. If as soon as we open the door, we see a similar sort of encounter. Mm Mm-hmm. Did your plan involve me doing the same? If you want to use the resources, it does. Yeah, sure. Resources are fun to use. I'm going to prepare a second level chaos bolt. Okay. I'm going to prepare nothing. All right. You open this door, and you see several suits of armor standing around, but more importantly, what you're looking out for, a bunch of thralls crawling on the ceiling with these leech-like mouths. Describe to me how you fire off your spells. Gross AF. Go for it, clerk. All right. Are you kidding me? I'm going to remind you, you have some DM inspiration dice. And I just used one. Can I use the other one? <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, sure. God damn it, Jimmy. <laughs> this is unfucking real I rolled a three, and then a five, and then a one. Oh my god. <laughs> Holy Get better shit. dice. Please. Holy it was three shit. different dice. <laughs> In true chaotic fashion, Clark, you hold up god. your hand. Damn you it. try to conjure up the power of the elements, it backfires in a sooty puff of inert magic, spraying dust all over your face. <laughs> all right, well, here goes my second level ice knife. Okay. That's a uh, 21. 21 hits. And it needs to make a dex save. It needs to make a dex save. 15. That will... That's tie. Just passes. God damn it. Fuck. 
takes eight piercing damage. It's all right. You could have wasted two inspiration dice and the second level spell slot. Yeah, well, it could have also taken four d6 gold damage, so fuck me. All right, everyone roll initiative now. God damn it. <laughs> That's what Alwyn gets for talking too long. 17. 11. <laughs> He's fucking rolls. Seven. Okay, Illipel, you're up first. As your companions fire off these spells into the room, the swarm appears agitated. What else is in the room? There appear to be some suits of armor, some ceremonial flails hung up on the wall. Okay, I'm going to use catapult on one of the flails. Okay. Nice. Cool, cool. cool. Whop that thing. Give me a deck save. Go ahead and pass it. Uh, Yeah, okay. All right, cool. 17 plus 4. All right, I don't think this is a half or whatever. I think it just doesn't take damage. Yeah, no, I think save negates. You fling the flail at this swarm, but it deftly wriggles out of the way and descends towards your group. If it's coming to attack us, I'm going to use Halo. Let me roll its con save. A 5 fails. <sighs> at least these are good rolls. That's max. That's 8 necrotic damage. Okay, yeah, it recoils at this necrotic damage. A 9 doesn't hit you, Illipel. Does a 14 hit Alwyn? Ties, yep. Okay, so you take... Seven points of piercing damage. And then Clark. Two plus six does not hit. No, it doesn't. So uh, the only one who seems to have a leech attached to them at this point is Alwyn, uh, whose turn it now is. Can you make me a constitution save? Yeah, I'm also starting to kind of look um, That's only a 12. That will still pass. Oh, okay. You take half of five necrotic damage, so two, as your blood is drained by this thrall parasite. All right, I'm going to take a swing with the gavel. That's a 23. 23 hits. That's pretty good, actually. That's 10 bludgeoning and three necrotic. Okay. Again, its swarm-like form seems to make it somewhat resistant to physical damage. Even though it's magic? Even magic. It's just flat bludgeoning, piercing, slashing it's resistant to. But you do manage to deal all of that necrotic damage and the swarm does appear somewhat diminished. Cool. I'm going to offhand. Okay. That's another 22. 22 will hit. And on Shillelagh, that's another 8 bludgeoning. Okay. That's Alwyn. We go to Clork. Let's try this again. I'm going to try a second level Chaos Bolt. Okay. I'm going to waste my other second level spell slot. Here we go. Can't wait for us to try the boss of this dungeon. That'll be good. That's good thinking. Clork doesn't say out loud. Jimmy says to Jeppy. This is actually going to be a first level Chaos Bolt. Very good. It's 19 to hit. 19 absolutely hits. Okay. And this is going to be... Three damage. Here we go. (laughs) Let's see. So it's 11 damage. Okay. And I think acid would do well against these. All right. Yeah. You cover these parasites in acid. Several of them dissolve into formless, fleshy lumps on the ground. Their masks falling with a dull clink. We swing back around now to Illipel. Regular ass attack. There seemed to be a tiny remnant of this swarm remaining. And does a 14 hit? A 14 is their armor class. Sweet. Nice. Max damage on the dice. So that is 11 piercing. Would you like to describe with some flourish how you shish kebab these? That did literally, that is the flourish. Uh, they <laughs> line up and I just and they shish kebab on the rapier and that's the end of them. Indeed it is. And we exit initiative. Nice. Cool. Not exactly what I had in mind, but job's done. All right. So we got some suits of armor in this room? Yep. Can I can I try and aid Clark instead of making my own roll? Sure. For your investigation? Yes. Yeah. So this is investigation with advantage? Yes. Okay. Ten. God damn it! <laughs> are you kidding me? <laughs> there are some weapons hanging on the wall. They're a little low tech for Clark. <sighs> It doesn't shoot fire or lightning, so he's not really interested. There's some suits of armor. Again, so inefficient. Clanky, antiquated technology. I'm going to take a minute and cast Detect Magic. Sure. You do this. One of the blades on the wall does appear magical. Odd. One of these blades of magic. I'll give it a look. It's a long sword. It's ornate. The guard has like a solar 
motif to it. It looks like the Orzhov sun. Mm-hmm. Hmm. And uh, it is a longsword. What kind of magic? Uh, yeah, is there a school that I get off of this? Transmutation. Not exactly my style of weapon, Illabel. You're proficient in a heavier sword than your rapier. Uh, it's a long sword, right? Yep. I do prefer the deftness of a rapier, but I am known to properly wield a long sword. I hand it over to Illipel. Yeah. What is this thing again? It's a magic long sword. Plus one to hit and damage. But it's a strength Yeah, weapon. it is a strength-based weapon. Oh, we don't like that? Nope. I don't like that at all. And I'm not I'm not proficient in long swords. Me neither. Mm. Illipel will graciously take it and, and claim that they are proficient in it and then probably sell it next chance they get. <laughs> Wait a minute. Orzhav, sun motif. I feel like I've read this in a book somewhere. Hold on a second. Harnessing the Power of the Sun by Chiswick Fritz. Hmm. That's all I have written, actually, for that one. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I know Chiswick Fritz, in his introduction to the book, made fun of how the Orzhov want to seem like they have the Power of the Sun, and he was claiming to actually be able to get the Power of the Sun. Oh, I see. Okay. That's... Orzhov's is more of like an occult take on it rather than a yeah. scientific take. I see. Okay. Does anybody know Identify? I don't think it doesn't have an additional effect, does it? No, it's just a magic sword. Oh, okay. I mean, that's what I was asking when I was asking about the school from Detect Magic. So. Yep. So I believe magic weapon is a transmutation effect. Oh, okay. I, I get it. It was made with... Uh, yeah. I, okay. Understood. All right for a sword. All right. Well, onward. I guess we'll go back around yeah. the other way again. Yep, you back go back to around gate. to the other gate. This gate appears to be locked. Damn it. Oh, wait. <laughs> I try the other keys. <laughs> <laughs> One of the keys appears to fit this lock, and there's a this, set of stone like, stairs descending deeper into the vault. These aren't even puzzles. I'm just... <laughs> going the wrong way consistently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's very, um, very like, old... Old school Zelda or Final Fantasy, yeah, where it's exactly. like you got to check every room, you got to double back path. four times. Like, yeah, you exactly. double back eighteen times. You're like, and I got high potion. Yep, <laughs> and the walking yep. up speed is so slow. <laughs> All right. Well, we go. Hold the X button to run. I would actually still have Detect Magic up for a couple more minutes if there's anything that would ping on our way down these stairs. No, nothing in this corridor, on these stairs, or in the corridor that you emerge into at the bottom appears magical to your vision. What do we see? You see a hallway. There appears to be a large stone door on the right toward the end of the corridor and a large iron door with a wheel mechanism similar to a bank vault on the left. That looks like a vault. I'm just going to actually not even investigate. There's very little chance that will open, but it's worth a try. Okay. I'm going to immediately go for the vault and start trying to turn the thing. Okay. Roll me a strength check. All right. This is going to go poorly. That's a 14. Uh, I'll assist him. Okay. Go ahead and roll with advantage. That's an 18. Okay. I roll up my sleeves. I spit in my hands and... Rub my hands together. As Clark is doing that, Alwyn is just above him with it, with both arms on the bars lifting from above. The two of you work at this door. You, you start turning the wheel, but after a certain distance, it seems to click. There seems to be a lock somewhere. Mm. Should I knock it now? Maybe there's another keyhole. Ah, good thinking. I always forget about keys. Immediately jump to trying to break shit. All right, I'm going to look for a keyhole. Roll investigation for me. Okay. 18. Yeah. You are able to find a keyhole tucked into the mechanism of this great vault wheel. Okay. Do any of the keys fit? The last key that you haven't used on any of the other doors Hell yeah. does seem to fit into this lock. Nice. All right. <laughs> now we continue turning this thing and opening the vault. Okay. <laughs> Ba -da -ba -ba. Sorry, just doing the rest of Zelda. <laughs> Breath of the Wild is great. This bank vault door also has spokes pointing out from it that look like sunbeams, the same Orzhov motif that you've seen repeated a few times. You turn the wheel, you open this door, and you are awestruck, even Illipel, as all of you see piles and piles of coins in this huge room, more currency than perhaps any of you have ever beheld in your lives. I was about to say, 
Well, the architecture gets stole after a while, but wow. Huh. And this room, while the other passages have been dark, this room seems to have a number of torches hanging from sconces around the walls that burn with continual flame. The gold reflects in Clark's eyes as he stands there awestruck. I should have been a thief. Well, no time like the present. What are we here for again? Alwyn kind of snaps out of this the sun disk. Oh yeah, right. And starts looking around. Do I see the sun disk anywhere? <laughs> Go ahead and roll me perception or investigation. Uh, I've got a 23 perception. Okay. I've got a 17 sleight of hand as I try to pocket some gold. Mm, okay. Well, I, I did it. just roll this perception check. So I see so Illipel s- do this. Yep, you do. I see them go for it. I'm like, Illipel, don't. Illipel, what are you doing? Are you going to heed your friend's advice? Can I have Jeppy, perhaps the player, roll me a history check for information that Illipel, the character, would probably very much know? <laughs> oh, um... Uh... Atomic mentioned guardians. There could be more ghosts. We don't know what we're dealing with. All right, I'm assuming it's a low DC because of who Illipel is, but nonetheless, it was a 21. Illipel, you feel like something bad might happen if you touch any of this gold. The player even knows that. (laughs) I'm not going to stop Illipel's character if they want to take the gold. Illipel will put their hand just above the gold, look right at Alwyn, give a wink, and then put their hand away. Okay. I'm going to keep my fucking eye on them the whole goddamn time. Okay. (laughs) What else does Alwyn get from their perception roll? From your perception, you see that the coins in this room are very neatly organized. There's, uh, you know, sections of stacks of leveled off amounts of Mm -hmm. copper, silver, electrum, and then the various denominations of gold and platinum coins. So much greed. Disgusting. Anything other than coins. You do not see anything that looks like a relic, anything that looks like a sun disk. It's just coins? There's like not even items. Wow. Wow. They must have worked really hard to earn all of this. Or sold the sun disk, perhaps. Every time you make those faces, I feel like me as a player, I've forgotten a major detail about the plot, Jimmy, and it Mm -hmm. makes me so nervous. No, I just. Okay. No, I, don't know. I, I think I think that's like a good hunch to jump to. Like maybe, yeah. Possible. I well, yeah. Jimmy Space I, told I had a different that these, story. Like, what, are you on drugs? How the fuck no, would that be I, real? Sorry, I didn't mean to convey that. But I had assumed that these piles of gold were generational. Mm. They they yes. could, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They probably yeah. are, but yeah. that's not saying a large chunk of them didn't come from a recent a recent sale. <laughs> sure, making money off the plates of others. Disgusting. Anything else you're doing in this vault? Anyone trying to take some of the golds or platinum or absolutely or not electrum? Hmm. If it is just coins, how one's walking the other way? Okay, I am saving up to build a car. Mm. What would Clark do? Maybe one of the other rooms? Well, we've got this stone door. Yeah, there is a stone door. All right, it appears to be carved with an inscription in a language that. Illipel, you would understand. What does the inscription say? I will roll a reading dice. It is in Celestial. It says, My shade, which smothers every eye, seen only when the sun is high. Black monarch with a crown of light, I reign over the shortest night. If this vault's treasures you would claim, then speak aloud my sacred name. Illipel reads that to everyone. It's a fucking riddle. Hmm. Hmm. Decadence, opulence, and now riddles. <sighs> Can I roll like a history check for any insights there that Illipel might have about what's going on with this black monarch or some shit? Sure, roll a history check. 19. I don't want to just give you the answer to the riddle, but I will say that Illipel, you would obviously know that to the Orzhov, the... I think I know what it is, but go ahead. The celestial bodies and significant events that relate thereunto are of religious and cultural significance to the Orzhov. Ravnik has got a moon, right? Correct. Alwyn paces back and forth for a moment, tapping his head with his brow extremely furrowed. And after a moment... Illipel, speak the celestial word for eclipse. Eclipsis. (laughs) 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 
I could look up the Latin right now, but I don't want uh, to. Actually, no, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. It's like fucking Gandalf in front of... Uh... Et obscuriatus. You say this, the celestial word for eclipse, and you hear a click of a mechanism. Get the fuck out. And the rolling of stone as the door sinks into the floor. Nice. Well done, Andy. Although, real quick, I realize, like, none of you may have checked me on it, and I could have just Googled a bullshit word in Latin and said it, and Scala would have been like, you hear, I could have said, like, bathroom, and Scala would have been like, you hear this, and the door clicks. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm smart as hell. Alan is trying to contain such a feeling. Yeah. And there's another corridor before you that bends to the left. Okay, we're going to go left. Cool. What do we see as we proceed? You turn left, and there seems to be another hallway with two outlets both to the right. At the second one, the hallway stops yep. and turns right? Correct. Okay, got it. So one before the other. Correct. Then, okay. All right. Um, doors? No doors? The closer one to you does seem to have a door down it. Similar wooden door, door situations? Wooden door, yeah. Wooden door. I want to try it. Try opening it. It does not appear locked. I'm going to listen in first. Go ahead and roll perception. Ooh, that's not bad. Dirty 20. You don't hear any sounds coming from this room. This one's quiet. Should we go in? We should go in. I open the door. I'm going to use a potion first. Okay. I open the door. Okay, you open the door. You see a number of scroll racks lining the walls of this room. In it are many scroll tubes, some scrolls loosely rolled and stacked in these little cubbies. There's also a reading desk in the middle of the room. I'm going to go check out the desk. It is is finely made of a sturdy wooden construction. There appears to be nothing on it at the moment. No drawers? There's some drawers. You look through them. Actually, make an investigation check to look at things. That's fair. I'm going to go ahead and try and aid in any way that I can. Sure. Roll with advantage. Uh Oh, roll with advantage. Cool. Yep. Okay, the first roll was better. Thanks for the help. Lots of fucking help you were... But nonetheless, an 18. You find some writing implements, and in one of the drawers, you actually find a small, thin book. You open it up. It appears to be some sort of annotation that shows the system by which all of these contracts and documents are categorized. Uh, yeah, I'll take it to the wall with all the scrolls and start taking a look at what's on the wall. Sure. If we're taking a second here, can I suggest that we take a short rest in this room? Or do we not need it? We have a boss fight. We need it. Come on. Uh, after that potion, I'm back at full. I don't have my warlocks. So oh, that's right. You want to get that back. I sure. would love to waste another catapult yeah. later. Really <laughs> <good. laughs> yeah. But let's see if the DM allows it. Allows me the spell slot. Yeah. If you want to take some time in this room and dig through these documents to see if there's anything interesting you can find, I'll let you take a short rest as part of that as well. Okay, cool. And I definitely want to, like, keep an eye out out the doorway to see if okay. I hear anything coming or anything going on. Roll me a perception check for this watch. 17. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. And if you'll allow it, I'll also ritual cast detect magic on the room. Sure. It makes sense that... There would probably be one magic scroll amongst all of these. Alwyn is just used to Illipel and Clork, at this point, having much more of an investigatory mind than him. Just simply tries to ritual cast out any answers rather than sure. getting outgunned when it comes to this sort of thing. Yeah, you do find a magical scroll. I need to check the school on this spell. Evocation. Sure. While well, Illipel is going through the ledger and sort of trying to very monotonously see which scrolls are which, you just see Alwyn sort of conjuring some sporific energy, breathing deeply, his eyes faintly glow, and just points. That one. That one's magic. I was hopeful. <laughs> Illipel and Clark, can you both make me an investigation check? Unless there's something else you want to do other than look through these scrolls. No, that's what I'd like to do. And I got... And actually, Illipel, if you're using the ledger, you can roll this with advantage. Oh, beautiful. Then I will roll with advantage. That's so much better at a 24. Okay. Nice. Ooh, 22. Jesus, yeah. No one doesn't even bother with it anymore. <laughs> 23 and a 24. DM says, you've just solved the puzzle. Let's move on. <laughs> The face you just made, Scala, just says, well, I would have done that until you said it, and now I'm giving you something else to chew on. You find a 
contract here. Uh oh. Okay. And you sift through the various celestial phrases and legalese of the document, but you recognize as you parse this agreement that it is the negotiation for Antonin Brevislav to purchase an item at the exchange. It provides a large amount of Xenos up front for the purchase of this item, and the other signatory of this contract is Metakaya of the Rujerva. And that's who it was sold to or bought from? It was bought by Brevislav on behalf of Metakaya. Does it say anything about the item? It is very deliberately vague, um, but you can kind of get through context clues that it is what you're looking for. The sun disk. Yes. I'm taking notes, and I want to write what should be vague versus what shouldn't be vague from the DM. The abstract term that is used in the contract is the vessel. Got it. Thank you. We should take that. It's evidence. <sighs> Illipel begins to realize that this has become quite the pickle. I can't imagine my guild will feel too great once word of this gets out. What, that you're a grave robber? They're talking about the sun disk. Is there Are there any other items other than that and whatever the magic scroll is? No, besides that and the magic scroll, you don't find... I mean, you find other legal documents, but they are beyond the scope of this adventure. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Looking over the ledger, Illipel will just say, I suppose there are benefits to one's loyalty being tenuous. And we'll, you know, fold up the letter and put it in their pocket. You roll up the contract. It's probably a little large for a pocket. Um, but you could probably tie it to your waist. What about like coat, uh, like shove it into like my breast area? Yeah, you could cool. do that easily enough. Breast pouch. That's it. That's all I wanted to do. Okay. I'll point out the scroll to clerk. Yeah, what do you want me to do with it? Just, Just look, look at, at it. it. Okay, fine. I'll look at it. I guess roll arcana. There you go. That's why. <laughs> 22. This is a scroll of spiritual weapon. This is a sp- scroll of spiritual oh, weapon. Great. It is a contract for the weapon of a dead individual to appear and aid the bearer of the contract in battle. Oh, that's such good flavor. Oh, yum. Oh, yeah. (laughs) That's sick. You should hang on to that. It's a strong spell. I should. And actually, Illipel, can you just roll me a history check? Because there's some more information that you might have access to or might not. Yep. Fifteen. You have very vaguely heard of the Rujerva. They are a secret society about which little is known, similar to the Consortium. Okay. On the level of vagueness, not in terms of what they do. You don't really know at all. Mm -hmm. But you know they're a secret society of some kind. Okay. You have this piece of evidence in hand. What do you do? Let's keep moving. Okay. Where else can we go? There's one more turn in the hallway to the right. All right. I lead our way out of this room and back down the hall. Okay. At the end of the hall, you see a large statue standing over an empty sarcophagus. This is a statue of a young man wielding a scepter in one hand and holding a contract or scroll aloft in the other. They're given a pose in a official advocate's attire, and there's a plaque beneath that reads... Here lies Antonin Brevislav. Anyone got ideas? Uh, I'm gonna look in it. <laughs> it's empty. Tomic, I think, told you that Antonin Brevislav is very much alive. Hmm. There's nothing here. Not yet, but someday, surely. There's gotta be something here. I'm gonna start ritually casting Detect Magic again. Yeah, you've got ten minutes. You've got all the time in the world. Anybody wants to investigate any further? You see a slight ping of magic. There's a necklace hanging around the statue's neck. It is in the shape of the Orzhov sun. It radiates with enchantment magic most strongly. A necklace and a statue. Some sort of enchantment. Hmm. Can I check it out? Yeah, sure. Is Clark trying to take it or just... Well, I thought you were going to ask me to roll Arcana to try to learn more about it. Yeah, you can roll Arcana then. 21. Yeah, you think that this might be a similar locket to the one that Alwyn currently has in his possession, except associated with the Orzhov. It can be wound once a day to gain a spell slot that can be used to cast a command or illusory script at first level. Hmm, that's interesting. Well, do you want it? 
No, no, things have gone so far. Not sure it's worth it. What do you mean? More ghosts? Alan, you don't seem like the type to be afraid of ghosts. I don't think it's a matter of fear, but inconvenience. We're all plenty tired of the dark. And then patting their breast pocket. And quite a nice clue to go with it. So you think we're done? There's got to be something more. I think we're done with this necklace. Mm. Is there anything else we can roll here? I mean... Did you roll perception already? No. You can roll that, I suppose. Investigation also fine. Okay. Sort of looking about, questioning what to do next, I get a 19 on my perception check. This feels like the end of this passage. It feels like this is as far as the vault has been built. You think you have what you came for, and Illipel may be right. It might be a good idea to leave. I mean, if we take this necklace, something's going to attack us. Cloak, unless you really want it, I think we should head back. What am I going to do with that? No. Yeah, let's go. I think it's time the guild pact be made aware of this Metakaya. What say you? Perhaps it's just a nagin. A sort of itch my scavenger days won't let go of. But there is that other tomb, the one with the priest. All right. Maybe it'll make you feel better. Let's go. You head back through the corridor, up the stairs, back through the two gates, and then you round the corner back to the first corridor you were in. And standing in the middle of this corridor... Her raven wings spread wide. You see a pale-faced angel blocking your passage with dark lines painted on her face that sort of suggest the tracks of tears. She wields a wicked black scythe in her hand, and she looks at the three of you. This is as we're turning the corner? Yep. Symbiotic entity. <laughs> okay. She looks at the three of you. These tomb robbers will be easy to dispatch. And she grips her scythe, and let's roll initiative. Hell yeah. There's a good initiative roll. Jesus. 21. 16. 8. All right. Owen, you're up first. I know you're just doing your job, but we're just doing ours. We've got evidence of a crime. Let us pass, and we won't harm you. Do you think the syndicate was built entirely on legal deeds? You won't leave here. To be honest, I was kind of hoping you'd say that. And I'm going to go up and attack. Yeah. So this is Shillelagh Gavel. That's a 18 to hit. 18 will hit. Uh, 12 bludgeoning. Max roll on that. Nice. And 4 necrotic. She seems somewhat less phased by the necrotic damage than you might expect. I'm going to be a little more proactive with my bonus action. Seeing this force in front of us, I'm going to get my healing spirit up now. Try and put it somewhere where it can reach all three of us, but with priority on Clark and Illipel. So you're going to be out of its reach for now. That's fine. Okay, Illipel. Is this a spectral creature or weapon? The angel looks physical, the scythe looks physical. Okay, heat metal it is. Thank you very much. Uh, Also, if Illipel's missing any health, you'll gain d6 at the start of your turn. Oh, well then... But we did also short rest. I don't know if anybody rolled hit dice for that. I didn't use a hit dice because I was pretty close to full. But now I am full. Sweet deal. See this sort of semi-corporeal spiritual wolf being sort of bound in these runes that I throw towards the two of you. Remind me how heat metal works. 13 fire damage, and then please make a con save. Okay, con save. That's only a four. She can either have disadvantage on her next attack roll, or she can drop the weapon. Okay. What would she prefer? Uh, she's going to take the disadvantage. Clark, you're up. Hmm. All right. Let's try out my new friend here. I'm going to take out the key room, and uh, I'm just going to throw it on the floor in front of me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Weird, I choose you, Clark says, throwing the weird on the floor. Hell yeah! Great. Oh my god. As you do this, it crackles a bit, and you can see the face shrouded in elemental energy begin to light up and glow, and this glowing ball of energy begins to take the form of this ice sculpture of an elemental crackling with electrical energy, and it says in Primordial, which Clark would understand, Quizzix is free! Come, let us destroy this world with the fury of the elements! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> if that is your wish, Lord Zek, where is Lord Zarek? Who are you? I'm Lord Zarek, I look different now. <laughs> Uh, yeah, let's de- <laughs> let's destroy the world and start with this one here. Let's go, go attack. Look, as you command, what is this? Master. I made a new friend. Insane, just insane. All right, was that an action? Yeah, that was an action. Okay, 
and I think <laughs> it requires a bonus action to command it on your turn, like most pets. Yeah, you can command it as a bonus action on your turn. If you issue no commands, the creature takes the dodge action and moves to avoid danger. Got it. Oh, oh yeah, that's great. So then I will uh, command it to use slam. Okay, it runs up to the angel and attempts to slam her. Rolling a 15 plus 4, uh, it does. Oh, dang. Slam it. <laughs> I yell in primordial. I'll be destroyed by the fury of Glizix. <laughs> Whoever that is. Oh, good. Oh, Glizix is the, I don't know. Elementals. The Elementals name. Okay, it deals six damage with the slam and... There's an and. Oh, I love and it. And lightning damage. And five lightning damage. Holy shit! This thing. This pet fucks! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and... Oh my god! Oh That's... God. Now she has to make a con Honestly, save. there's another and! Or she can't take reactions. Right. She succeeds at the con save, though. Okay. This is the strongest pet Well, I have... Oh my god. That's awesome. I, I don't know if I should tell you this or just wait for it to happen. We'll just see what when happens. When it expires and it blows up and we all take 30 damage. That's the end. Oh my god. It's not 30, but yes. And it also doesn't have <laughs> a lot of hit points. <laughs> ah, great. Cool. So cool. All right. Moitza, the angel, is going to spread her raven wings and take flight over Alwyn and the weird. She does not provoke an attack of opportunity as she does this. How high are the ceilings? 20 feet? Probably higher in this entrance hall than they are anywhere else in the crypt. Yeah, because I was getting like a low ceiling vibe. Yeah, I had a sense of claustrophobia. Yeah, so sort of down in the tunnels and the tombs, but this sort of entrance hall, it's got a big mosaic on the walls depicting the history of the family. Cool. I don't contest that. I'll allow it. Thank you. Thank you for (laughs) allowing me to run the game. (laughs) (laughs) And she's going to make her first attack roll with disadvantage towards Cork. A two plus six is not going to do it. Mm -mm. And then she's going to make another attack roll. Illipel. Uh, A 19 will hit, I presume? Presume correct. Okay. You take six points of slashing damage and one point of necrotic damage. And please make a concentration check. Oh, cool. Oh, well, it's a nat 20. Okay, you maintain concentration. Nice. Now... She beats her wings. A dark, almost heavy shadow energy emanates from around her. I need the three of you to make me wisdom saves as she tries to burden you with guilt. My wisdom's only a one, but I got a 19 on the dice for a dirty 20. 22. Okay. Jimmy's face spells doom. Three. (laughs) Clark, you take a D4 penalty on attack rolls and saves until the end of her next turn. As you feel guilty about, I don't know, what does Clark feel guilty about? Didn't just lie and call himself Ralph's Eric. Also the servitude that he's imposing on this key-based Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> I feel guilty that I considered stealing gold when I have a perfectly good job. Yeah, you know, it pays the bills. Yeah. This guilt weighs on you as the angel hovers over you, looming, reminding you of your transgressions. We go back to the top of the order. Alwyn. She's still in the air, isn't she? And she's hovering like five feet above the ground because she... Okay. she drop down to attack Clark and uh, Illipel. Cool. I'm gonna follow her, and if she's next to somebody, if I can in this space, I'm gonna try and yeah, flank. Yeah, you can. This hallway is probably okay. about, again, 20 feet wide. And I'm gonna swing. That is a nat 20. <laughs> okay. And there, there goes that. 15 bludgeoning. Okay. 6 necrotic. Okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and swing with my offhand. Okay. That's a 19. Hits. That's going to be five bludgeoning and four necrotic. Okay. And that's my turn. And we're over to Illipel. Illipel can heal another d6. All right. Almost at full health. How injured does she look? She looks pretty roughed up. Okay. I'm going to use Cloud of Daggers and just put it up above me where she is. Okay. I guess I'll, like, duck to the ground and throw the cloak over my head and, like, cool. a plume of, like, mist will form and climb up above me where she is. Very cool. This mist of daggers heads towards her. And I'll cast Bardic Inspiration on Clark. She's wounded. I think you can carry this the rest of the way. Very good. Clark, you received that inspiration, and it's now your turn. Nice. It's a D6? Yeah. All right, so here's a shocking grasp. 
not going to hit anyway with a 9. Uh, unfortunately, no. Okay. And I'm going to command the weird to slam her. Glizix does as he is told! This fucking guy. Glizix coming in to flank with Illipel. Going to roll his attack with advantage. 19 plus 4. Yeah, Glizix. Deals 6 points of bludgeoning damage. This fucking guy. Pet's insane. You ever just have a sneeze so good you feel like you just had an exorcism? <laughs> what? <laughs> I just sneezed. That was great. Plus seven points of lightning damage. Good God! And con save or doing as much is, damage is as that. Is this key robot Pokemon thing about to paint the picture for us? No. Okay. It it got uh, okay. So, but it does get some good hits. That's in. my game. This is flourish. Flourish, right? Flourish. I have to think of a yeah, different theme. Yeah. Uh, it's a shame what Matt Mercer has done to this hobby. <laughs> Shut up. It's great. It's fun and cool. Is that a Mercer thing? Paint a picture? No. Mercer's is how do you want to do this? And because of that, Brian Murphy's is finish him. Well, <laughs> that one didn't start there. Anyway, it's Moitza's turn. She's not happy. She can go ahead and roll 4d4 for me. You roll a 4d4. This is your damage. Okay. And uh, I'm also going to hit her with a halo. Okay. Oh, her con oh, save shit. is a 20. I try and whip it up towards her, and she dodges out of the way. 11, da- 11 I believe, piercing damage from the cloud of eggs. Okay. She is appearing to be on her last legs. Wings. <laughs> her, her wings are tattered by your many blows and your daggers. She drops down to the ground. To the end, I serve the syndicate. And she's going to make a scythe attack against... One against Alwyn, one against Illipel. Alwyn, does a 22 hit you? Oh, yeah. Okay, you take nine points of slashing damage from the scythe, and ten points of necrotic damage. Holy shit. And uh, now another attack against Illipel. Four plus six is not going to do it. It ain't. Dang. And now everybody make me a will save as she continues to exude this aura of guilt. Uh, 17. A will save. Wisdom save, sorry. Thank you. 19. 10. Okay, uh, Alwyn, you feel the burden of guilt on you. Mm. With sort of a heavy sneer. No. No, it's the right decision. It's the honest. No, he's not my brother. Very obviously guilty about that. As you struggle with these thoughts, you are under the effects of basically Bane. You take a d4 off of your cool. attack rolls and saving throws. And it's now your turn. Cool. I'm going to go ahead and swing. Okay. Is this still the Correct. advantage? Still the advantage. You're, cool. You have it surrounded. Yeah, with the minus four. That's, that's minus four, but that's probably still going to do it. Dirty 20. Yeah. And I'm going to go ahead and pour the Grape Moss Strike into this at first level. Mm-hmm. That's 10 bludgeoning damage and 10 necrotic damage. You want to add any additional flourish to this killing blow? Nice. Alan at this point is like almost feeling bad, but at the same time not. I told you, we're just here to do our jobs. It didn't have to be like this. You chose this. And I'm just going to, as the swirling black necrotic energy gathers around this grave moss gavel, swing right into her torso as it sort of erupts in spores and spiked gnarled vines. These elements of nature overcome her. She lets out a terrible wail. As her eyes and mouth pour out with black light and her robes fall to the ground empty. Dang. Peace. That was sick. <laughs> that was and cool. And here I thought a reskinned Battle Force Angel would be a challenge for you guys. Not with key Pokemon. <laughs> you dispatched her pretty handily. Dang. Yeah, okay, that fucking weird is weird. Really good. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, all right, let's get out of here. Well done, everyone. Did the sword shit? No, the shit. Scythe. Scythe. scythe remains. Is that yep, still there? Scythe remains. Hmm. I'm going to pick that up. Okay. Yeah. It seems like a normal scythe. Oh. <laughs> Whatever necrotic power was coming from it seemed to be emanating from the angel herself. Man. I cast heat metal again. No, you don't. You no, don't I'm have that spell <laughs> slot. Yeah. 
But it does look cool, so I'm just going to take it anyways. Yeah, sure. Did that feel ceremonious enough for you? Or are you still insistent we search the other craft? <sighs> I've heard enough. All right. You head up the stairs. Clark, what is this? Who gave this to you? Oh, what? Oh, this? I just fucking point at the... Yeah. Whatever the fuck this is. It'd take too long to explain, but uh, I got this from from Ral. He thought I'd make good use of it, and I think he was right. Ah, uh, of course. Well, seems our ally has given us a great gift. Given you one. You command it well. Thank you. I mean, it can stick around for a little while. Or I could, uh... Hey, Glizix. Yes! You done really well. Shall I destroy these other fools for you, master? Not today. Maybe another time. I'll see you next time. No, don't return me to the key! <laughs> the key pops back into your hand. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect pet for Clork. Uh, I, that yeah. Insane. Meant for each other. <laughs> so good. So good. Yeah, that's great. So you head back up the stairs into the labyrinth below Viscopa that sort of leads to all of these family vaults. You can make your way back down the hall a little ways to where Tomic is waiting for you. Uh, it appears that Angel did not cause you any difficulty. When I saw her go down there, I worried I might have to call for some additional help. We took care of it. Yes, and it seems you are, for the most part, unscathed. We found something. Something we need to take to the Guild Pact right away. Well, it is only a few blocks away. Let us go. Will you be joining us? Most certainly. Good. Tell me more of what it is you found. I looked at Elbel. We've grown quite tired of the darkness, and even here, so close to the surface, I feel it best if we walk and talk. Let us make our way to the entrance? Yes, let us do so. Perfection. And he will lead you out past the two armored giant guards into the sort of main public area of this bank and out onto the street, if you'd like to say anything to him as you go. Yeah, while we walk, I'll relay some of the smaller details. You know, there were lots of rooms. We found a lot of gold stuff attacked us the usual stuff you'd expect in a vault and then when we're outside i will say but there's one other thing evidence of a recent exchange for a lump sum our best guess is that it has to do with the item the guild pack seeks Mm -hmm. Uh, yes the broker required it for some other party do you know who that might be search may be coming to an end soon uh as they're having this conversation i want to really keep as sharp an eye as i can out for anybody watching, following, yep. anything suspicious. The moonlit streets of the first precinct seem quiet around the bank. But roll me a perception check for the future. Nat 20. Okay, I will keep that in mind. 26. <laughs> yes, the other interested party. Well, it's where things get perhaps a little complicated. Potentially a member of the Reserva. Atomic furrows his brow. The name is Metakaya. To me, like many other names associated with the Reserva, Unknown. Oh, Kaya. She is an influential judge. I have dealt with her on behalf of my mistress oh, shit. on some occasion. This is quite trouble. You know this person. You've met them. I have been in her courtroom once or twice. She is a formidable scholar of the laws, and particularly if she is in the Rougerva, it confirms part of a group interested in preserving the original intent of the Azorius Guild Charter and the Guild Pact in more general sense. So then the extremists... Uh, no. Uh, what would be a better word? Like, fundamentalists? Fundamentalists is a, is a good yeah. word, yeah. So then the sort of fundamentalists... That is a very good word. <laughs> <laughs> Have you considered being an advocate, Mr. Elwin? You would need to, um... Improve your hygiene habits, but I think if you have such talent for language. I'll consider it a compliment, but thank you, no. This Rougerva is that their only goal. As far as I know, that is how they try to exert their political influence, to try and hold to the original letter of the Azorius Guild Charter and the unamended Guild Pact. Would any of us really know what any of that is? You could roll history? <coughs> Flat six. Okay, yeah, this is not for Alan. It's not for Clark either. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was history. Um, yeah, history. Well, today it's not for any of us. <laughs> okay. Hey, Atomic, would you say this is good news or bad news? Just so I can uh, prepare myself for the Guild Pack's reaction. I think that we are this close to the culprit is good news. Okay. Come, 
let us go. All right. This original understanding guilds pact. What do you mean, boy? I'm not particularly versed in that sort of history. I will simply say it this way. There is some value, I think, to the ideology of conservatism. Things being kept the way they are for the sake of effort. People know how the system works. Too much upheaval is bad for business. But trying to go back to the past and make things just as they were 10,000 years ago, it is a bit extreme. I imagine so. In any case, we shall have to take a long way around the vigil if we are to make our way to the guild pact. Okay. This was V2 Gazi? Yeah, the, the vigil for V2 Gazi yeah. is taking place just a short couple blocks away from Orjova and Viscopa in Plaza Central. Cool. But you guys are going to have to sort of cut through Plaza West to get back to Plaza Avenue that will take you to the Chamber of the Guild Pact. And as you are crossing through Plaza West, that Nat 20 kicks in, Alwyn, and you hear the sound of hoofbeats rattling over the street. Something's coming. What is it? Can I see what it is? You hear horses for the moment, and you will soon see horses as a group of Azorius Hussars, mounted knights, ride out of the alleyways and thoroughfares around you and sort of form a circle around your group. Above them, you see three griffins with knights riding them, and the central one flying low to address you, you see a Vidalkin. His face not immediately recognizable to you, but when he speaks, you recognize Chief Arrestor Jalen's voice. Oh, shit. Guild Pact agents for the crimes of obstruction of justice, falsification of documents, and tomb robbery. I hereby place you under arrest. What the fuck? And that can be where we, where we oh, end the session man. for tonight. Jesus Christ. Is the next episode a courtroom episode? <laughs> <laughs> Pods of the Multiverse is produced by Jimmy Afadigato, that's me, with music by Andy Berger and art by Alexa Riley. Subscribe to this feed to get a new episode every Monday. Check out the links in the show notes. You can support us by visiting our Patreon, joining our Discord, or sharing this episode with a friend. We want to give a special shout out to our Holy Avengers, Jake, May, and Chris. For $10 a month on our Patreon, you too can become a Holy Avenger. Thanks for listening.